So if you're here, you have heard that Microsoft has bought out Activision Blizzard. Now, they have bought off for a lot of money, and there's a lot of ramifications with this purchase. But what we're going to be discussing today is the ramification to Blazor itself. The thing that they are creating, that they are supporting, and that this whole channel is devoted to. So what does this buyout mean for Blazor? Now, this video is a lot of speculation because obviously this particular buyout really affects the gaming community more than it affects the Blazor community. But this does give us some insight into what Microsoft is planning to do in the future and how they plan on handling things like competition. Now, Microsoft is, has not been a good boy when it comes to their antitrust practices. In fact, a long time ago, back in 1980, there was a lawsuit or they were being investigated for monopoly practices. And then 1998 is when they actually were sued by the, uh, by the Department of Justice. And then what happened after that suit is that they had to release their APIs to th third party vendors or competitors so that they were not you know, considered a monopoly anymore. I believe their source code and things like that were being monitored for about five years in order to ensure that they were following the due regulations. Apparently, the government had thought they were monopoly monopolistic enough to implement these policies. And then this is where we get, you know, Internet Explorer that soon had competition with Google browser and all these other browsers that came out after that and Mac OS kept coming out. You know, we actually have some competition on the market. Why do I bring this up in terms of Blazers? Because I believe that history is not going to repeat itself, but it sounds the same. You know what I mean? Like there's a bit of a pattern here. Another thing to bring up is Microsoft's history with competing programming languages. This is very relevant to Blazor, but we'll talk a little bit about this history. Do you remember a programming language named Java? It's still pretty popular now, but Java came before C Sharp, the thing that Microsoft basically invented itself. But, you know, there were some rumblings that C Sharp is basically just a copy of Java. I personally believe that that's true with, you know, exceptions to here, things here and there, but, you know, technically it's not blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it does the same thing. It's an object oriented programming language, has virtualization behind it. It basically is the same thing. I learned Java before I learned C Sharp and I was able to seamlessly adopt C Sharp and not have an issue with it at all. So what does that mean? It means that Microsoft is willing to engage in interesting practices in order to beat the competition, including nearly copying them, including trying to support a proprietary product at the time and have that to be uh, something that can be given out to other businesses, something that businesses can use to build all their programming needs, whatever it is, their applications, and then rely on that for the end of time, basically. So the logic of doing all that that I said before is pretty simple. If you are in one tech stack, you're probably going to stick with that tech stack forever because the more seniority level you have in that tech stack, unless something happens in the market that makes it obsolete, you will probably be sticking with it because you'll make more money because you're, you'll be an expert and you know, all the good stuff that comes with it. The same thing happened here with C sharp versus Java. So when C sharp came out, Microsoft obviously promoted that a lot because they had the money, they had all, all things you, you needed in order to promote a language. And then that became something that became a market force against Java. So you had competition between between Java and C Sharp, and you have the ecosystem that you have today where .NET supports C Sharp, obviously, and now there's a greater breadth of technology that can use C Sharp nowadays. So now you understand my thought process, you understand what Microsoft's process is when it comes to competition. They're willing to, you know, style a line between monopoly and, you know, what is monopoly and what isn't a monopoly. They're willing to fight a competitor on their own grounds by building their own languages. And that's what Blazor is. Blazor is a response to market uh, being dominated by JavaScript market being dominated by the whole open source react angular Vue.js, all these languages that are JavaScript base laser is a reaction to that because they see that number one, there's a need because every single person who has used .NET up until, you know, this point only really had JavaScript framework languages to go towards when they want to build a front end because Microsoft's response to it at, in the past was Razor. It was a, it was ASP.NET forms, but these things were very slow. And there's a reason why there's such a big market for JavaScript because Microsoft didn't build a good product enough to keep competition away. And, uh, and then they lost the war for a while. They were good for back end stuff, but they weren't really good again for front end stuff because they were very, very slow. And it required, you know, a specific skill set. So Blazor was meant to kind of rectify their market weakness when it comes to this. So now we have Blazor. Blazor covers the front end weakness that Microsoft had before. Where Microsoft, if they wanted to build a web application, they would probably have to rely on a JavaScript framework in order to do so. Now they could use their own Blazor technology and have an entire app run either 90 or 100% on C Sharp. So mostly their technology and they could boast that, they could support that. 
and they have been doing so for a number of years. So what, what is the correlation between the Activision Blizzard buyout and Blazor? Well, this should show you that Microsoft is willing to dig deep into their pockets to take over a sector. Now, I'm not going to say that what they're doing is monopolizing or is a monopoly because I don't know what the definition is myself. But, you know, they bought one of the biggest game companies ever and with the, with a bunch of the most successful games that you can imagine. World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, games like this are just, you know, they're insanely popular and having one company own them is kind of crazy. Another thing to note is the fact that Microsoft is willing to go head to head in a competitor's own sector in order to win. Now, when it comes to these frameworks, the most popular ones like React and Angular, they are also supported by big companies. They're supported by Google and they are supported by Facebook in React's case. Now, you have Blazor, another front end language, or another front end framework that is supported by Microsoft. And that is a really big deal because Microsoft is one is the number two tech conglomerate basically that there is. I think the number one is Apple, but you know, they're not exactly building web application frameworks. Microsoft is higher when it comes between Google and Facebook. Uh, according to this graph here, it's number two, Google is number three, and number six is Facebook. Now, Microsoft is in a bunch of other sectors as well, unlike Google and Facebook. Uh, Microsoft has Xbox. Microsoft has other games in its disposal. Microsoft has the Game Pass, probably the most popular thing that it has come out with that is making Xbox insanely successful. So now we have incentives to add these new games into the Xbox, uh, into the, the Game Pass, which adds more field of revenue and more value to the consumer. But where does Blazor come in when it comes to all of this? Well, if you looked at the Blazor plan, the plan for Blazor is that it is meant to be not only just a front end technology, but also to be a technology to be used to replace things like React Native, AKA a mobile app development a suite or a software or framework, whatever you want to call it. It is meant to replace the need to use React Native to build mobile apps. It is meant to be used as a competitor for other hybrid applications or uh, things like Ionic, where you would need, you know, you could build your app in Angular and then use Ionic to make it work in mobile while still having the HTML behind it, working off HTML. Blazor is meant to take place of all of this and use C-sharp uh, instead. So where am I taking this? So we all knew, like if, if you read the Blazor, the Blazor plan, we all knew that was gonna happen. That was gonna be something they were working on. It wasn't something bec done because of Activision Blizzard. But what I believe the buyout actually shows is that number one, Microsoft is just gonna sink up bunch of money against their competitors and with them being the number one compared to everyone who's built their front-end frameworks they're the number one company they have the most amount of money and they have the most market share so they have the biggest support not only that but because of their long history of building products they also have a giant amount of, of companies who use microsoft technology and would be willing to adopt blazer into them once blazer becomes more mature I will grant it, Blazor is still kind of niche right now. People are still using Razor instead. Something I'm gonna to touch upon in a different video. But the plan is to get the people who are using Razor or using .NET technologies to use Blazor. And you know what? Let's put our tinfoil hats for this theory that I'm about to tell you. So tinfoil hat time, what do I think the future of Activision Blizzard and their games have to do with Blazor? I believe that Microsoft's plan going forward with these new IPs is not only to support them in the obvious ways, AKA, you know, give them their new games, give them new expansions, new, you know, sequels, all that stuff. They might add them to the game pass as well. You know, everybody's, you know, if the most positive thing that will come out of this for gamers out there is that they'll add some of these games to the game pass. They don't have to spend a bunch of money every year buying them over and over again. But I believe that in addition to all of this, they will, at least for the most popular ones, build external applications that work with the new, with, with those games. What am I talking about? Talking about something like WoW Companion. WoW Companion is an application as an, as a mobile app that they created in order for you to do WoW things outside of WoW. And then when you go back in, you reap whatever rewards of what you've gotten out of that WoW Companion. And I believe this might be the step forward. Mobile games make a bunch of money for very little cost. They are the most lucrative industry at the same time, they're most risky, 
blah, 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 when it comes to games. But Microsoft could exploit that and create, you know, a whole thing. They have a bunch of people, so it won't take development time out of the actual game. Or well, most likely having they'll devote a small team of people in order to have the integration to these games and then build this new app in some language. Now, if Blazor gets to the point where it can support mobile development um, better than Xamarin, then they'll probably, you know, may not mandate, but like really, really encourage the use of Blazor and their .NET technologies to work together through that. And that's how I see Blazor going forward. Blazor will now have a proof. Not only will it have a massive you know, proof of concept, a massive amount of support, and now you have something very, very visible on the market that says, hey, we use this language to build this thing that is associated with this really big thing that a lot of people like. And, and that's how you get market. That's how your marketing will work out. And now you can boast that, hey, I supported X, Y, and Z game over Blazor. Now, this might be very loose. This might be just a bunch of speculation on my part. And a lot of things have to go right, including the fact that Blazor, Blazor's mobile um, capabilities are better than it is now because they're, they're kind of shitty. They're basically Xamarin kind of shitty. But I'm optimistic. And I think that that Blazor, even if it doesn't get to that point, even if this plan doesn't go well, is still a very good investment of time and effort and energy. And that Microsoft, being the biggest player when it comes to this, will support it and will continue to support it. So as far as longevity goes, I believe it is a good investment. And, you know, right now it's still niche, as I said before, and you should get, you know, you should get into it. So this was a blazer slash tie into the news so that I can make a video like this and encourage everybody, you know, look, we're in learning blazer is not a bad thing. Not only that, my opinions on the game thing, about having one company own a bunch of you know your favorite games or whatever it was activision blizzard they had a lot of uh you know they had a lot of controversy so you know kind of a, uh do i really want one company owning all of it but the company that owned it before was really terrible so it's like eh. i'm i'm also feeling the apprehension to it as a gamer as a part-time gamer myself i feel you and you know I'm glad that I'm able to somewhat tie this into Blaze, you know, like this was a bit of a stretch on my end, but I think I did a really good job, don't you? Well, anyway, <laughs> I think I'm done for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, learned a little bit about Microsoft's history and just how a gigantic a corporation it really is. So, so all in all, that's certain Blazer. And please like, subscribe, comment on my channel, please. Tell me if you like a video like this every once in a while. I'm really focused on my tech stuff right now, but. If you want more videos that are more about the news things and my opinions on them, and how this relates to Blazor, whatever it is, let me know. Comment. Tell me what you know. What's wrong? What's right? And I'll see you around. Peace out.